Hello everyone, welcome to World Cricket Chat. We are outside Wales Millennium Centre, which is around one, one and a half miles away from Sophia Gardens. Exactly where England will take on Pakistan in the first semi-final of the Champions Trophy. You enjoying Cardiff, Sreer? I am enjoying Cardiff. Uh, it was a very different Cardiff when I was here the last time, which was on the 3rd of June for the Champions League final between Real Madrid and Juventus. Uh, it was a jam-packed place, barely any place to walk uh, and I had my luggage with me. Wasn't checking in into any hotel, <laughs> so it became a bit of a problem and I'll not even get to the fact that I did not have a jacket and it was cold. Today it's at least warm, it's nice, it's sunny, there's a bit of wind, so it's all adding up to being a great day in Cardiff. Great, so I can't really say anything to you again about not carrying your jacket so we'll move straight into England taking on Pakistan so what do you make of England they've done really really well so far and they haven't really had to make any major changes what do you say about their squad they have uh, been uh, the only team to have won all the three matches to make it to the semi-finals for starters uh, uh, more importantly they weren't stretched by any team uh, against Bangladesh uh, chased down 300 with much, with much ease uh, Joe Root getting that uh, massive 100 uh, against New Zealand they got bowled out but uh, beat New Zealand easily once the top order was uh, dislodged once the Kiwi top order was dislodged and then we saw what they did to their uh, arch rivals and enemies uh, Australia it was another comprehensive win for them so uh, like a little precursor to the ashes there <laughs> precursor to the ashes well uh, not really it will give them a lot of confidence but uh, we're talking about a different format and a different venue altogether and uh, England will have a new captain he would have played a couple of series by then but Joe Root is obviously taking over from Alistair Cook and we know that it's never easy to beat Australia in Australia so but yeah coming back to the Champions Trophy they have a good squad and uh, they they lost Chris Walks uh, after the first game in fact during the first game against Bangladesh uh, and one thought that was a big blow but they come back well they got an Adil Rashid in place of uh, Chris Walks and he's played two matches now and done well picked up six wickets including that 4-4 against uh, Australia so it's been a good squad uh, but uh, for that problem at the top of the order with Jason Roy so apparently, is Jason Roy not going to be there in the next game? Do you well, see I'm, them? I'm not sure about it. Uh, the press conference might have just happened. Uh, I've, I've not yet got any information from there. Whether it's been uh, revealed, the playing eleven has been revealed. But what I can say is that uh, uh, Johnny Bairstow did uh, pad, up, pad up and uh, came out to bat uh, to begin with in the nets. He was the first out there. and. Uh, Th that really doesn't mean uh, for too much but uh, what it uh, what the news coming out from a lot of media local media here the english media here is that jason roy has been given his three chances those three matches that he played he has not made uh, good of those chances and uh, might uh, lose his spot to johnny best so sort of a forced change but maybe it might do something good for that top order there I wouldn't call it a forced chain, it's just that uh, forced chain would be something like a Jason Roy being injured. Um, uh, if you've given him uh, three chances, uh, you as well uh, play him through the... Three strikes and you're out. Three sort of strikes and uh, you're out is yeah, more of a baseball thing. But, uh, well, uh, it, it's it's a call that uh, Andrew Strauss and the selection, select in, uh, selection panel would have taken. Uh, there were talks of uh, dropping Jason Roy even at, after the first match. Uh, uh, getting in Johnny Bairstow because he was in that kind of a form but they allowed those three chances and uh, if he's not done well it's it's a 50-50 it's a call whether you want to see him through to the end of the tournament or you try to bolster their top 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 order because you can't keep relying on someone like a Ben Stokes or a Joe Root to keep delivering you need that start that they have not been getting very true now so let's move on to Pakistan there's something very interesting you were telling me that they're about their top in the top 20 there's not one Pakistani batsman there. So is that is that a sticky point for Pakistan against England? Pakistani batting has always been a sticky point for as long as I remember. Their bowlers have always managed to uh, uh, pull them out of that quagmire, that sticky, sticky situation that they get into. And in this tournament, uh, we've seen that again. 
I don't think a lot of people uh, gave Pakistan a great chance of making it to the semi-finals. So, mm-hmm. India and South Africa were the favorites. Uh, South Africa being the number one team, India being defending champions and semi-finals of the World Cup have been doing well in this format. So, you expected the, those two teams to go through, but Pakistan have surprised the world uh, first by beating uh, South Africa in that game and then by beating uh, Sri Lanka. And in all three games, it's their batting that has come undone if you if you were mm-hmm. to look at it. Uh, yeah. uh, again, South Africa obviously that uh, uh, batting was not really tested because they didn't uh, bat their own entire set of 50 overs. It was mm-hmm. more of uh, uh, chasing a score of 200 odd and uh, the Duckworth Lewis coming into the yeah. picture because of the rain. But against India, they capitulated uh, like nobody's uh, business chasing a score of more than 300. Against Sri Lanka, they they were on the verge of a capitulation. Uh, she one reminded me of their warm-up game against Bangladesh where you thought it was heading in that direction but Sri Lanka didn't do themselves any favours. Yes, exactly. Uh, in that warm-up game against Bangladesh, uh, they were again on the verge of losing it before I think it was Fahim Ashraf who uh, bailed them out of trouble. In this game, it was their captain Sarfraz Ahmed and uh, Mohamed Amir involved in that 70-odd run partnership for the 8th wicket and Sri Lanka, as you said, did not do them themselves any favours. They dropped catches and when you say drop catches, there are tough catches, there are half chances, and then there are those sitters that you drop. And I have no clue how Lasit Malinga did not get angry there. Very patient Mumbai <laughs> Indians player there. You have to get <laughs> Mumbai Indians into the picture again. And I don't think Mumbai Indians is a very patient team in that sense when it comes yeah. to a lot of players. Harbhajan Singh is not one of those patient players. <laughs> But uh, yes, uh, so Sri Lanka actually, uh, I was uh, I just messaging a friend of mine uh, who's a Pakistani fan, so to say, and I told him that, uh, well, you may be happy that Pakistan has won, but it's Sri Lanka who has gifted the match away to Pakistan with a with a nice wrapping paper and a bow on top. Uh, that, that was a kind of performance from Sri Lanka in that uh, previous game. Having won that match against India, you would have expected a lot more out of Sri Lanka, but uh, Very true. those 75 runs in the end should never have been scored. But well, here we are, Pakistan have made it to the semi-finals and we've seen what Pakistan can do from a situation like this where they have their backs to the wall 2000, uh, 1992 World Cup they did the same uh, were all, all but out of the tournament came back won the semi-final against New Zealand beat England in the final interestingly England have a very good record ODI record against Pakistan mm-hmm. they have won 49 out of the 81 matches played wow. overall more interestingly, in the last 10 matches that have mm-hmm. been played between these two teams, England are 8-2 on head-to-head. Good 80% record there. 80% over a period of two years is good. But the, the very interesting bit for Pakistan is, one of the two matches that they did win against England came at this very ground in Cardiff, at the Sofia Gardens. Mm. So Pakistan can take hope from it. More importantly, they they chased down 300 or they scored 300 in that game. I'm, I'm, I am I mix up between whether they batted first or second, but they did score 300 in that game. So well, if if you're looking at any kind of science, Pakistan is looking at any kind of science. This could just be it that they scored 300. The batting has done well, and it happened last year. So. Well, that's something that they you know can what? take. Speaking of science, Sunil, I decided to actually take out some cards. After a long time, <laughs> for all you uh, Shruti Chopra fans, uh, for all you Tarot fans, Shruti Chopra has some cards for all so of us. I just, I just actually feel that this isn't as an easy game as one would hope, an England fan would hope, or you would believe on paper. You said 8 out of 10. So I do think Pakistan have a chance here to get through. But if I again had to pick my tarot advantage, I think just because Pakistan's going to get overly defensive at the end and they may not know how to cross the finishing line, I'll go with England for this one. What about you? I will get to whom I go with, but uh, what will your jersey say when you're sitting out there in the stands? I am going to be... I forgot my England jersey back in London, so I'll have to get another one. But Ouch. yes, it, it will be it will be England. An England jersey and an England prediction. Well, yes, it well, is. Well, I think England uh, will start as favourites as well, but uh, don't expect Pakistan to be runovers here. No, 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 not at all. I agree with that one there. So, let's see what happens between England and Pakistan tomorrow tomorrow and uh, we have another semi-final coming up between India and Bangladesh that should be a good one as well hopefully we will have a chat about it either after the match or or before the match or after the match we'll try we've got lots of trains to catch (laughs) so we'll see you soon bye-bye bye-bye